Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's next lesson on Le Hapital's rule coming from section 4.7. I'm Ms. Gogarty, and we're going to dive right in with hopefully a very quick video today. Uh, so today, we are going to be looking at something that is really going to make taking limits easier for us. Now, we're going back to the very beginning of the year almost when we had our limits unit, and we're going to be taking a look at something here that allows us with all of the knowledge that we now have with derivatives to apply derivatives to help us to take a limit. So please make sure that you have the note sheet for 4.7 handy. Uh, we're going to be working on that. Pause the video if you don't already have it and go print it out and come on back. Okay, so the main thing that we're going to be looking at is that blast from the past sometimes in early in the school year we saw some limits where we would have a zero over zero or infinity over infinity and what that information gave us at the time was that hey we can't determine the limit and so we had to use some different techniques in order to determine the limit and so those techniques were factoring, we sometimes had to rationalize, we had some trig functions that we just had to memorize the limits. Um, and so we want to look at, well, how can derivatives in particularly help us out a little bit here? So Le Hapital's rule is a very, very, very helpful quick theorem used to specifically evaluate limits that are in an indeterminate form. Well, indeterminate form means that we're looking at something of a zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Now, keep in mind that back in the beginning of the year, if we were to look at a problem like this, we would take zero and we would try to plug zero in for x, Okay, and we ended up getting a zero over zero. Now that did not mean that the limit was undefined. It did not mean uh, the final value of the limit was zero over zero. What it just told us is that we had to do a little bit more work. So just thinking of this type of example, if we were to plug in a zero over zero, it didn't work. So we had to take something like this and we simplified it to say that this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches zero of three. And so our final answer would be three. It was not zero over zero. We could take a look even going back to a question like this. Same type of problem, if you plugged in zero, it would come out, our values would come out of zero over zero. That did not mean that the limit had a value of zero over zero. It meant that we had to do some more work. So what I'm looking at here is that Le Hapital's rule, which we're going to explain in just a moment, applies when we have a ratio of functions. So take a look what I mean by a ratio of functions, right? We have a fraction going on here. We've got a fraction. We've got a ratio sitting here. And that when the ratio comes out to give us an indeterminate value of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, we can apply Le Hapital's rule or the techniques that we learned back at the beginning of the school year. Okay, so for example, we're just looking at A, B, and C. All of these examples had to do with getting a zero over zero if we went and plugged in zero into these values. In part D here, if we plugged infinity in for X, we would end up with an infinity over infinity. That's not the end result. We don't get one. They don't cancel each other outright. So we can use Le Hapital's rule or we can use the techniques from earlier in the year. Same with part E. Infinity minus infinity, if we plugged infinity in, isn't going to necessarily give us a zero. In fact, if we use the techniques from earlier in the year, we'd cancel this. We'd have the limit as x goes to infinity of five. So once again, I want to make sure that we understand that zero over zero or infinity over infinity is going to allow us to use Le Hapital's rule. Okay, it is not, these values are not, I repeat, the limit value. So let's get to, well, what is Le Hapital's rule? So what Le Hapital's rule tells us, which is right here, okay, is when we have the limit of a ratio of functions, well, we can look at the limit of the ratio of the rates of change. Okay, so the rates of change, meaning the derivative of each one. So provided that we have an indeterminate form. So let's kind of see this in action. Okay, let's take a look at our first example down here. Okay, so if we take a look at part 1a, if just as a check, 
always the first thing we're going to do when we do a limit is we are going to plug plug in one over one. Now, when we plug in one into the X, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say one over one. When we plug one in for X, we end up with one cubed plus one squared minus two times one all over one minus one. Well, this gives us a value of zero over zero. Now, I want to be very, very, very careful here. Do not, do not, do not anywhere on your paper tell me that the limit of this problem is zero over zero. This would be very, very, very bad. And the AP graders will take away all credit, okay? Because what you are saying right now is that the limit as X approaches one on this function is this value. It is not, okay? So I'm really hoping that you're hearing, do not write that. All we're doing is a check in our mind that we got a zero over zero. Now, what this is telling us now is that we can use Le Hopital's rule, okay? So in technical AP write-up, what I'm looking at is that the limit on the top of X cubed plus X squared minus two X, the limit of that is zero, okay? What I also know is that as x approaches one on x minus one, the limit of the bottom is also zero. So because of that, okay, we can use Le Hapital's rule. Le Hapital's rule, I shouldn't say use, I'm gonna say Le Hapital's rule applies. I'm gonna get rid of use, okay? Because what we now have is a ratio of zero over zero. That is not the limit. We can use Le Hapital's rule. So let's use Le Hapital's rule. I need the derivative of the top. And the derivative of the top is three X squared plus two X minus two. So I'm just gonna highlight that pink to make sure it stands out to all of you, okay? On the bottom, I can take the derivative of the denominator and the derivative of the denominator is a lovely one, okay? Now, what we wanna know is what is happening at X is one. So if I plug in one to this, three times one squared plus two times one minus two all over one gives me three over one. And there is my limit using Le Hapital's rule, okay? Now, as a blast from the past, so back in chapter two, here's what you had to do back then. In chapter two, we would have the limit as X approaches one. I would need to do some factoring. X squared plus X minus two all over X minus one. Got to do some more factoring. So I'm just going back to what did we do at the beginning of the year? Oh, and then we found out that the X minus one's canceled. And so after all of that, I can now plug in one and get one times one plus two. Look at that, still got a three. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, why do I need a new way of doing it? Well, because some functions, there was a lot of algebra involved in chapter two, okay? So what we're looking at is another option using derivatives and therefore Le Hapital's rule. You're taking the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. Do not use quotient rule, okay? This is not the quotient rule. We're not taking the derivative of the overall function or the overall ratio. That's not what we're doing. The derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom evaluated at whatever the value is at the limit that they wanted us to check out, okay? So let's take a look at another example together and then we'll do maybe one more after that and you guys should be good to go. So take a look at B. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to try to plug zero in because what if it was an easy limit, okay? If it was an easy limit, then we might plug in zero, get our answer out and be good to go. So I'm gonna check. If I put zero in here, I'm gonna end up with the square root of nine minus three. So I'm getting a zero on the top. I'm getting a zero on the bottom. 
I am going to be extremely careful because I don't want the AP writers to or graders to take any points off. I'm going to be very careful that nowhere on my paper will I have equals zero over zero. That is bad. This number doesn't exist. And that is definitely not the value of the limit. So it's going to disappear now. Goodbye. What we want to focus on is that we do have this indeterminate form. So if I was writing a free response on my AP exam, I would need to show that the limit as X goes to zero of the top, that's zero. Then the limit on the bottom, that goes to zero as well. Therefore, because the numerator and the denominator both are have a limit going to zero, Lahapital's rule applies. Okay, this would need to be on your paper if it was a free response question. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that actually a different color. We only need this information on your paper if it was a free response. Same with over here. Okay, now if it's a multiple choice, you don't need that blue highlight. We're going straight to let's use La Hapital's rule. So I'm going to look at what is the derivative of the square root nine plus three X minus three. So let's keep in mind just for a moment that this means nine plus three X to the one half minus three. I need to do a little bit of chain rule action here. So if I'm gonna do some chain rule action, I'm gonna have the overall derivative one half times nine plus three X to the negative one half then I need to multiply by the derivative of what's inside and the derivative of what's inside is a three. Okay, so here is the derivative of the numerator and kind of nice again, the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of X is a lovely one. Okay, so let's evaluate this at zero. I'm going to end up with a one half nine to the negative one half times three. Keeping in mind, I just made the X a zero. So let's do a little bit of algebra to simplify this. I've got one half times one over the square root of nine times three. Those are going to cancel. I get a one half. There's my final answer. Okay. Now, just as a blast from the past, if I was to look at this from chapter two's perspective, I want you all to remember that if we were to do this problem back from chapter two, we would have needed to do a lot more algebra. I would have needed to multiply by the conjugate. So, would have needed to multiply by what? The square root of nine plus three X plus three all over the square root of nine plus three X plus three. Um, I'm gonna stop there because I don't really wanna do all that algebra, okay? Using Le Hapital's rule was so much easier because I just had to take the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom evaluated at X is zero. Okay. All right. So good to go so far. Let's come down. And I'm not going to do all of these because we're going to get into trig functions and different things. And we can look at that more in class. Um, the big thing that I want to look at now is just that, well, you can do L'Hopital's rule once. But what if that doesn't get us out of the indeterminate form? So meaning, just for the sake of timing and to kind of get this to the point, let's take a look at example two, part B, okay? So first things first, I'm always gonna wanna plug in a value, okay? So I'm gonna wanna take my value of two and I'm gonna wanna plug it in. And when I do that, I am not gonna write equals unless I get a final number, okay? Meaning like I get out an answer of five or six or whatever the case is. So I'm gonna end up with a two cubed minus three times two squared plus four. And let's see, that's gonna be eight 
um, four, so 12 plus four. Okay, I'm getting a zero on the top. Okay, on the bottom, if I do two to the fourth minus four times two cubed plus seven times two squared minus 12 times two plus 12, uh, guess what? If I do all that, I'm getting a zero again. So what's happening is I'm getting a zero over zero. Now I'm gonna erase all this because I'm not gonna need it. But the main idea here that I want you all to know once again, do not at all under any circumstance write this. That is super bad. And your AP writers are gonna be all over you about graders are gonna be all over you on that, okay? We don't know the value of the limit yet. All we know is that we get an indeterminate value, okay? So if this was a free response, big if, Okay, you would need to show that the limit as x approaches 2 on the top equals 0, and that the limit as x approaches 2 on the bottom plus 7x squared minus 12x plus 12 also equals 0. And the reason you need to do this is because this is now proving to us that we can now use La Hapital's rule. Okay, so La Hapital's rule or La Hapital's theorem, whichever applies. Okay, this must accompany any free response question. Okay, now that we know that it applies, let's actually apply it. So I'm going to look at the derivative of the numerator. 3x squared minus 6x, the derivative of the denominator, 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 14x minus 12. Okay, now I'm going to evaluate it at x is 2. And when I evaluate it at x is 2, something happens. Okay, if I plug in 2 in the numerator, I end up getting 3 times 4 is 12 minus 12, I get a zero. Uh oh. And if I plug two into the denominator, uh oh, I get another zero over zero. It's still indeterminate. So guess what I'm going to erase right now? I'm going to erase my zero over zero. I don't want to show that the limit is equal to zero over zero. No point. That's bad. Okay. So I applied the happy tells rule once and the limit still ended up giving me an indeterminate. So here's what's cool about Le Hapital's rule. Apply it again. So let's apply the derivatives again, Le Hapital's rule. So I get 6x minus 6. And now I get 12x squared minus 24x plus 14. OK, let's evaluate it at x is 2. And let's see what we get. So on the top, I'm going to get. 12 minus 6, which is 6. On the bottom, I'm going to have 12 times 4. So that's 48. Minus 48 plus 14. So I get a 6 over 14. Yay! It's not indeterminate anymore. So I can simplify this up a little bit, but I don't have to. You can leave it as 6 over 14. And I get 3 sevenths. But 6 over 14 on a free response would be equally perfect. OK, um, something actually I'm going to give Mr. Osik a little shout out here. She actually was saying that it's really important uh, just from an AP standpoint, even don't box your final answer. OK, because gosh forbid that you simplified incorrectly from here to here. She was saying that um, as an AP grader herself, that if you box something and you say this is absolutely my final answer, um, it's hard for them to give credit for that. But if you had the correct answer somewhere along the way and you just simply don't box it, they sometimes can give more credit for that. So I'm still going to go back to the fact that I don't even need that three sevenths. Okay, just starting to get into the mindset of a free response question. The only time I would definitely need to have a three sevenths is if it was a free, if it was a multiple choice question, three sevenths is going to be the answer that's sitting there. 
okay? So my dears, that's all the further I'm gonna go with this because um, you can always check the answer key, but even as we go into the last set of examples, even with infinity over infinity, that is still an indeterminate form and allows you to apply Le Hapital's rule. Okay, we'll talk about this more in class, but otherwise I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, and yeah, you should be good to go with your problem sets. All right, have a good one.